Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, sitting here with my dog Nori, who is sitting in the lap of one Cakes the Killer. You already know, we're like bonding right now, it's very, I'm having an outer body experience. It's funny because you're, you're not an animal person. I'm really not, but your dog is really not even an animal. She kind of takes it there for me, she's really cute now, even though she kind of resembles a gremlin. But walking through the door, you weren't as impressed. No, I was very, very underwhelmed with the dog. The dogs, because you have more than one. Mm -hmm. But now, you're kind of coming around. Yeah. I I think it's the Connecticut air. This is the Connecticut air? Yeah, it's kind of making me very delirious. (laughs) I have no idea who I am anymore. You, uh, when, on the way over here... um, you said that you vowed to never come to Connecticut again. Yeah, I've, I screamed at the top of the Wesleyan Student Center that I would never come back here. And lo and behold, I'm back. And I'm playing another show at Wesleyan tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so things fall apart sometimes. <laughs> they do. Yeah. But sometimes it's for the best. I mean, I'm, I, I didn't do the show yet, but I'm hoping it is for the best. But you're going to get paid, I hope. <laughs> Yeah, the, the check is in the mail. The okay. check is definitely coming in the mail. Rain or shine. Okay, good. So you're going to appear in an episode of the show. I mean, I hope so. I hope I, I make it past the editing. We, we don't want to make any promises right now. Yeah, because I, I know how like you, you television people can be with your, with your channels. That's true. Yes. That's true. But, I mean, we can still just talk about a lot of different things in this in this little audio podcast situation that we're about to embark in yeah. where essentially we're just going to do kind of an interview okay. just relax chill that interview very chill last time we hung out it was a south by southwest i wouldn't say really hanging out i think it was more so like you um it was business it wasn't it yeah, wasn't it, was, it wasn't it was pleasure very, it was very business and this is very, business too yeah this is not pleasure. We don't really hang out. No, we so don't. I just didn't want anyone anyone that listens to this to think that we're hanging out. Yeah, we're not. Okay. But still, you are kind of in my place right now, petting my dog. Yeah. But it's still business. It's 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 a very business situation. Okay, business cool. Pets only. All right, great. Um, so it's been a little while since South by, and you were talking about some mixtapes, some releases that yeah. you're going to be coming out with soon. Has anything happened in between now and then that sort of can you give us an idea of when any of that stuff might come out or titles or anything like that? Well, I'm dropping my mixtape Hunger Pains in May. It was supposed to come out um, the week of South By, mm-hmm. but um, Afropunk, lovely people at Afropunk and lovely people at Red Bull decided that they want to get behind this project. So that just means I have more chefs in the kitchen, which means I have other people to like listen to now. Because mm-hmm. normally I'm just working with Mishka to put out music and it's kind of my schedule and what works for them. But now it's like, it's a bigger situation. So. And these people are kind of your sponsors. And I mean, this is, this is sort of right now becoming the future of a lot of underground artists releasing their music, finding a sponsor for a tape or something that they're going to be putting out. And then, yeah. you know, sort of their logo ends up on the, uh, uh, the mixtape, but from an outsider perspective, that's really all that, uh, people like me know of the whole process. I mean, is there anything else that, uh, happens when someone like Mishka or someone like Red Bull jumps on board to support you in a project that's essentially going to be free for everyone to download? Are they interested at all in the creative process? Do they help you find producers? Do they have a vested interest in what the lyrical content is? Yes, for that 18-part question, as you just hit me with. Cool. Thank you, Oprah, for that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try my best to decipher all those questions and commas. <laughs> And answer each and every point in a Microsoft PowerPoint. <laughs> Basically, I think it depends on the artist and their relationship with the sponsor. I know for Mishka, me and Mishka personally, our relationship is I give them a project, and if they like it, they master it and put it out. Mm. Um, my relationship with Red Bull is very new. I'm, I've been selected to be one of their sound select artists and that basically means that they help me get shows and they help me press wise and Afropunk kind of just gets caught up in the mix because they want to they basically like my brand for some weird reason and they just want to help in any way that they can too and that just means they want to help with press and they want to make sure my project gets out to as many people as 
as they can. So they're trying to help with as far as like marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, my whole creative process is I put everything together myself. I listen to my own beats. I record on my own with my own um, engineer and I get everything mixed myself and then I just get it mastered by someone else and then yeah it's like that mm -hmm. and I mean is this is this money for the project sort of given to you so that you could find beats or find producers that you're really excited to work with or what? are these people like what money <laughs> oh my god what money so I mean are the are the, uh, so I mean what what exactly is being traded here when you're working with a sponsor I mean how are they sponsoring it depends you? it depends because like now now that I'm working with Red Bull I'm working with Afropunk that, those are kind of like the, the, the big guns they come hand in hand or yeah they come hand in hand for me because mm -hmm. i was for the program it's kind of like afropunk is kind of like the curators like they're the tastemakers and red bull is just daddy warbucks it's like you know who, but who daddy is warbucks is cheap <laughs> yeah but red bull is so not cheap like but they th financially from production wise there was no money because when they came on board the project was already done basically. oh i see okay but it's like now i have the opportunity to like i'm going to put together a release party and that's going to oh. be like you know i'm going to have like cute djs you know probably pay for like other acts to perform like you know probably get um money to do bigger tours because i've ne I, I never toured the states before so like they will come in handy with things like that but this this relationship is very new mm -hmm. so i really can't speak on too many things because it's still very fresh mm -hmm. like me got it yeah. um so but nobody helps me pay for beats yeah. like oh, okay it's all come up mm -hmm. did you work with uh in in this new ep that you're going to be putting out yeah you said it's called hunger pains yeah hunger pain how many tracks are going to be on this thing um originally because i leaked the track listing a little early because i'm like a loser i think it's supposed to be 11 tracks but i may add two more because mm -hmm. i just feel like I have like time to kill. And are you working with the same producers that you were on your last project? Yeah, I'm working with a lot of the same producers. Um, Poisonous Relationship, who did Keep It Coochie, and yep. my um, DJ, Sam Katz. I'm working very closely with him, and I'm adding some new producers to the mix that I've been in talks with, but never really had a chance to really work with, like, LSD, XOXO. That producer, he he did Truth Teller, and um, producer um, named Moon Mace Commander from Australia, um, yeah, but it's like with me, it's like I don't know where you meet producers at. Like, I don't know where these people mingle at, if it's like Starbucks or like Barnes and Nobles. But I'm just, people send me beats in my Gmail, and if I like it, I like it. And if I don't, I don't. I got it. Yeah. And stylistically, are you, are you still kind of shooting for the same instrumental flavor? Because one of the first things that hit me about the eulogy was that I, I have not heard a rapper sort of ride all these juke and footwork beats in the way that you do, you know? And, and I feel like uh, just with the, the very complex groove that comes with those instrumentals, um, it gives you a really unique sound. I am a unique bitch. <laughs> um, I, 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 it's, I think it sounds the same. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, but I think this project sounds heavier. I don't know if that makes sense. Like it's not as, it's not as animated as far as the productions. It sounds more like a fighting game to me. Like it sounds like the, it basically sounds like the soundtrack to a, a Dreamcast fighting game. Mm -hmm. Is it like Street Fighter Two Turbo, or it's like Tekken? It's more Tekken. It's. I think it's it's more Tekken, but it, it's it definitely becomes more of like a Soul Caliber moment. I got it. So it's yeah, it's definitely a Soul Caliber moment. But yeah, the productions definitely sound heavy. I don't know. I don't know. Because, again, I've been sitting on this project for, like, a while now, so I kind of don't... I'm kind of, like, disattached. I'm disassociated with it right now. Yeah. So I hope it's not as fresh in your head. Yeah, it's really not. Like, it's really, like, I'm getting over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're just ready to go on to the next thing. Yeah, I already started writing my new um, Sad Boy EP, like... So, so uh, all right. So, I'm, like... Is all right. Before we move on, just a yeah, quick yes or no: is this people. is this sad boy EP in any any way related to the yo, the whole young lean sad boy thing, or mm -hmm. is this like totally different? I mean, I guess it's the gay bottom spin on it. It's uh -huh. called inmyfeelings.net. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't know, but like, I'm just really sad right now. So <laughs> that's why I'm writing sad ass music. Is a uh, I, from what I remembered, and maybe it's just because I mixed this up, uh, because it's it's been a while since South by Southwest. Yeah. Um, 
is this Hunger Pains EP sad as well? No, Hunger Pains is not sad. I just explained to you. It sounds like a fighting game. Like okay. basically, I would. Yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. I, you. You said at the you said the Sad Boy EP as well when we were there, and yeah, I just mixed it, up which one yeah. was sad and which one wasn't. Yeah, Hunger Pains is not. Hunger Pains isn't sad, but it has a song on it. It has an interlude called Rotation, which is basically about all the boys I've been dealing with when I was on tour in Europe. Mm -hmm. And that's basically like a taste of what mifeelings.net is going to sound like. Got it. So, yeah, but Hunger Pains is not sad. Hunger Pains is like the ugly older sister to the eulogy. Got it. who, Who wasn't allowed to go to prom because she was overweight. And now she wants her fucking revenge. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that's what it sounds like. So, so now you're writing these songer, you're writing these sadder songs, somber, somber songs, somber songs yeah. for this new EP. Are you in a dark place? I'm not in a dark place. I'm just like very like, like emotional and like boy crazy. I've been having a lot of boy dra- drama. Mm-hmm. So I'm just decided and you just got to get like, it out. Yeah, because I was just so over people like saying like I make songs, but I'm not like deep or i make songs and they're not really like it's not really rap it's not really saying anything and to me i just feel like i don't every song that i come out with doesn't have to have this whole um personal deep narrative but i decided that maybe i'm gonna put out a project where it does have that and if like if people like it they like it if they don't they don't but i just want to show i just want to showcase another side to my writing style because unlike a lot of people that are coming up with me i actually do write all my own stuff and i do pick all my own production so i just wanted to just showcase another side of me like that's why i like am i feeling dinette <laughs> which is clearly like i'm really excited about this project because it's the one i'm working on now yeah yeah so i mean um okay so that's going to come out in the future but right now you have to now I'm promote very, this new project I'm that's about to come out the hunger pains yes yeah okay so you know just uh, I, did, I didn't plan this interview out or anything you know we're just kind of sitting here talking so you yeah, know just uh, allow me to unravel the, the questions in, okay. in my own head um, you know sort of jump back and forth between these two EPs and sort of what I'm trying to just expect from them pans if it's going to be too confusing no it's 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 not going to be confusing okay. no I'm just I'm just curious as to what your artistic trajectory is going to be <laughs> Because you're you're so new and you're yeah. so you're so starting from the bottom right now. Yeah, and still at the bottom, <laughs> literally. And to to go back to something that you were saying earlier when we were talking about the whole Red Bull and Afro Punk thing, yeah. um, and about your brand and and how you're sort of you know wondering why they're uh, they're fucking with you. I mean, do you feel kind of like? Uh, you're being supported, but you also have like these doubts that like people won't fuck with your vibe because of either I don't know the way that you rap or what your songs are about. I think it's more so me. I never really wanted to be a rapper, or I never thought of myself as a rapper. So to to be like a rapper to, to people is kind of I'm trying to get used to that. And it's more so when I when I came out, it was more so I was. Um, clumped up into this thing that people thought was just going to be his trend piece of like black boys from New York who are gay who are rapping mm-hmm. and it's just like like a lot of people were like saying that this is over like that that's just a trend but it's just like we're still making music so it kind of for me as an artist it makes me feel weird and then it's also just like a lot of a lot of fans and a lot of supporters they don't necessarily like rap they just are more so into the fact that I'm a gay male who says things that they think too over a funky dance beat, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it just, sometimes I have doubts about me being an artist, mm-hmm. you know? Is it, is it doubts in the stuff that you're making or is it doubts in whether people will accept it or whether people really understand it or really enjoy it? It's, 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 it's not doubts in the stuff. Well, it's, I guess it's, it's basically doubts in the stuff that I'm making, but it's more so, doubts of will anyone ever really take me seriously on a level of like i don't know like a kanye or like a little b like Mm -hmm. you know because it's like if i'm gonna do this music thing i don't want to be like this underground sensation that becomes unsung like i don't want to do that like if i'm gonna do music i'm gonna this is what i'm gonna do so Mm -hmm. 
you want it to be obviously bigger in scale than where yeah, you are like, right and I will have no problem like working at like a record label, helping people write hooks and all that. Like, I have, would have no problem doing that. It's just that if I'm gonna do music, I wanna. I think my main thing is I want to be respected. I want to be a respected writer. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm working towards. And I mean, I I totally. I guess I'm trying to think of the 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 right question to ask. I feel like I'm just sort of tiptoeing around. Uh, I should have never came out. That's what you're trying to say. No, no, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> you're dumb for coming out. I hate to kill as a straight rapper. I, I I guess there there's just so many layers to this thing. I mean, you know, uh, for for sure, yeah. I mean, in a, in a sense, could could uh, could people see? Uh, gay black guys from new york rapping as could could that be a trend i mean it's not in the sense that i mean you're still going to be making the music but it could be a trend in the sense that people will be interested in that because it seems like a novelty thing yeah you they, know what i mean yeah. but i feel like with the music that you're making and this is just my opinion there's chance for that not to be the case because there's a, an undeniable there's an undeniably high level of skill to the flow that goes into your songs, the clever rhymes, and you know the the in in my opinion the insane beats that you pick for these tracks. But some people will deny that just based off like, just based off the trend that they see it in. It's not even the trend, like just based off the way I look, like just like if I have like a chunky earring, or if one day I decide I want to wear like a fake eyelash, or if I want to wear like. A hood by airs, you know, outfit like th- those are things too that I have to think about. And it's like when I was talking to um, um my rep from Afropunk, I was just telling her like, cause she 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 saw the cover for Hunger Pains and she was like, I don't I don't like it. I don't think it's pretty enough. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that's the thing. Like I don't I don't want to be pretty. Like I had my pretty moment with the eulogy when I was wearing flowers and lipstick, and it's just like. I realize now that I'm trying to be still be myself, but still be marketable enough where people don't feel uncomfortable listening to me. Yeah. And it's like, I get as an artist, you have to stay true to yourself, but I'm making a product that I want to reach as many people as I can. So I'm not afraid to, you know, tweak myself. Like maybe I don't always have to wear platforms and mini skirts, you know, maybe just one show out of 10, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel like we're I, I feel like we're drifting off the music a little bit, but not necessarily in a bad way. Uh, because I mean, do, does it? No, but even musically, I'm doing that too. Like, I would say Hunger Pains is definitely a lot more. It's definitely not as gay as the eulogy, and that that was very uh, that was very a conscious effort. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's still pretty gay. I'm still me. Yeah, but it's definitely not. It's, it's no fuck your boyfriend moments. Yeah. Sadly. <laughs> Which when when I I brought that song up when we first met yeah and I, I, was, know, I, was cu- I was I just I was just curious if I, I was just curious if you were gonna play it and then you said uh, no you hate that song <laughs> a lot of people hate that song but a lot of people love that song that and that's the other thing with me like it's, me yeah, I mean a- while, while it's not my favorite track I could see it being po- being a polarizing song it's just because like there's no such thing like a gay hip hop f- like fan like doesn't have like it's not like a cookie cutter mold like you have like a twink that may listen to britney spears who may love kicks the killer and just wants to go to a gay club to hear me sing fuck your boyfriend but then you have like these like alternative hip-hop people who want me to do songs like the eulogy that's why when i put out projects people are like your sound is all over the place but it's just like my fan base is all over the place like i can't just make a project that just has one sound because then i'm kind of like closing people out like that's why i'm giving schizo vibes like <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth well, i mean that's i i think that speaks to your to your versatility i think some people might be taken aback by some of the stuff that you might say on yeah. a track like fuck your boyfriend but then hear you but then here you do a song like the eulogy and it's like yeah. okay while you think this is like super flamboyant and way too over the top for you i can also do this yeah and i think it kind of you know if somebody sticks around long enough to hear that track you know you know because hey hey, there's some people that get automatically a lot of pitfalls there's some people that get (laughs) automatically there's some people that get offended right away and don't give stuff a chance especially me starting the mixtape with 
But I mean, at, at this point, do you feel any less or do you, do you feel any more secure? Of, just knock the mic with my hand. I'll cut that out later. Do, do you feel, I guess, at all like, uh, I guess there are a lot of people who are excited right now by um this idea that like oh you know we're just like we're just now on the cusp of 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 homosexuality being a thing that's like totally accepted in the hip hop yeah. community and i mean i Except i feel Lord Jamar. i feel like we're kind of close to that but then in some respects i feel like we're kind of far from it because i mean mm-hmm. i feel like still at the end of the day while i do i do like Mac Lamore and i do like his infamous same love song i mean still we kind of have like we kind of have we, we still have a straight white male being the ambassador for this idea. You yeah. know what I mean? Whereas we don't have somebody who's necessarily being impacted by this issue, you know, directly. I mean, yeah. Macklemore more indirectly, but someone being directly impacted by this issue telling that story. And I'm sure there are gay rappers that are telling that story, but you know they're not they're not putting them on the radio or the industry isn't putting them on the radio commercial radio isn't putting them on the radio they're not putting them on tv um you know and i'm just sort of wondering if 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 you feel that despite the fact that we have hits like same love there's still some kind of disconnect there like i think it is a disconnect and the disconnect is whether or not it's going to be marketable like somebody like macklemore is very marketable to like this new generation of hip-hop consumers because they're not like the consumer of 96 um the 16 year old african-american male living at bedside like hip-hop is very mainstream and is very commercial now so someone like macklemore is he kind of relates to a lot of people and i think that they're trying to see like if someone like me or even like a leaf or like mickey is like is this really going to be a marketable situation because if if it makes money people won't care yeah. like these conversations won't matter mm-hmm. so yeah i think it's at the end of the day it just comes down to money which is very fucked up no no it is yeah. um and i'm just uh uh wondering if if in your opinion um you know could could it, in your opinion could we hear a song not the same song but uh, a song with a similar message as same love from someone who's gay and have it be as big a hit no, because that's corny. Because no one, no, no one that's gay would do a song like "Same Love." I mean, that's maybe, corny. Okay, maybe not with the YouTube comments line, but <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, but I, I'm I, just, I mean, I, I don't mean like the same song. In like, terms will of Hot like, 97 ever play what? Like one of those type of situations. I, I guess what I'm saying is like, will, will, you know, could an artist who is homosexual gain the same popularity as Macklemore? Basically writing and delivering a song that has the same sentiment or speaks out against the same injustice i guess is what i'm saying no you know opinions aside of the quality of the song i think a, an that artist will have a better shot doing a regular song and getting the same play i don't think that we're ready to hear that type of song from a gay person I, I don't know. It's uh, it's just, just it's just kind of weird. I feel like I, I feel like it's, just, it's it's kind of a weird thing because we have somebody who and and it's not like this is the only situation in which this happens, but yeah. it's like um you know, you can have somebody who's discriminated against and then maybe they express it, yeah. but then the public sort of sees that as whining, but if somebody else advocates on their behalf for the same issue then it's like oh then it's kind of well okay. it's also that whole like great white hope syndrome that we have in america where it's like white people come in they always save the day like it's just like higher learning like it's mm-hmm. like there has been gay artists even before leaf and mickey blanco in new york making music but it's like no one care like this gay people rapping isn't really a new thing even like people are always talking about like the fashion nowadays like you know people wearing dresses and people wearing skirts if you look at the people who started hip-hop like in the 80s their looks were kind of really eccentric kind of (laughs) gay no shade leather and boas and feathers i don't know (laughs) that kind of looks like what i try to give nowadays but i don't know there's some pretty insane pictures of grandmaster flash and the furious five yeah in those leather jackets serving soft looks but 
<laughs> I don't know. It just depends on. It's all about money at the end of the day. Like money. it, it unfortunately, like in a lot of respects, it is about money and marketability. Um, mm. and and it comes down to image a lot of the time too. Yeah. Um, you know, but that, but that's another thing I would love to ask you about, um, what, what you talked about earlier. I feel like the fact that hip hop has turned such a blind eye to what homosexual MCs, you know, could have been around for a very long time. I feel like, you know, now that artists like you and Leaf and Mickey are getting popular, we're totally blind to this whole lineage of artists that led us up until this point. And... You know, it's almost as if this is an entirely new thing that's like never happened before. Whereas, like, obviously, that can't possibly be the case. Um, you know, like, sort sort of imagining that 2013 or 2012 was like the first year that there's been like a homosexual whoever rapper. I'm gonna record a track. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like saying saying that is like sort of saying that like, you know, that that like the gay the first gay person must have been yeah. 20 years ago or something. You know, it's yeah. completely ridiculous. But that's just because the media decided that this was going to be a thing. Like well, the media could have did that. Yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. Like, well, I mean, I guess I guess I guess what I'm trying to ask is like who are some of these artists that people could be looking into because right now we have an opportunity to look back and sort of give these people the attention that they didn't get before or maybe people who have been doing it longer. There than. are literally so many gay rappers and obviously it is <laughs> disgusting. You've got to have some favorites or something. There are so many gay rappers. <laughs> It's disgusting. <laughs> and the fact that the, like people see gay rappers actually doing shows and like making money, there are even more gay rappers now. Mm-hmm. But like some gay rappers that I was familiar with before I even started rapping, first and foremost was the House of La Doja, which are like this boy named Antonio, this boy named Adam, who rap and drag. And that's like, th- those were like the first New York underground queer people who are like rapping like to trap you know and then you have a, a bunch of other rappers like last offense bryant um fox giselle like these are all people who've been making music but for whatever reason they haven't been getting the attention that that they think they deserve but it's like at the end of the day like i don't think about that i just think about what i do like I'm not even gay anymore. Like, I'm asexual. Like, I'm only after paper, like, tours, traveling, and appeasing my fans who are really wanting new music from me. Do I want to say it for you? Yeah. Trolls? (laughs) I only called three of them trolls, and they know it was out of love. But that one I definitely called. I don't... I forgot your Twitter handle. You were definitely trolling me. So... Yeah, I love all my fans, though. <laughs> they come in different shapes and sizes, and I love them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's... Uh... <laughs> and Hunger Pains will be out in May. Okay? He promises. I pinky promise. It was supposed to come out already, but, like, guys, I have, like, different people to deal with now. Like, <sighs> Okay. Well, I'm, I'm very excited to hear it. Yeah. The Needle Drop is going to hate it, but it's fine, because guess what? I don't care. Okay, well that's good. But go, but continuing, yeah, because because le- I'm I'm legitimately curious because I I think it's like I don't know I just think this is a, an an exciting time for your music and the kind of songs that you make and just sort of um uh I I feel like uh it's it's interesting to look at hip hop from a cultural standpoint right now. Because uh, I, I feel like, um, at least with this whole uh, homosexuality thing, yeah, um, it's kind of revealed just how sectioned off hip hop can be as a culture. Yeah, you know, whereas like obviously we've had other genres in the past sort of go through these same kind of growing pains. Yeah, you know, where major figures in rock music and pop music come out as homosexual, the public accepts it sort of but then doesn't you know there's sort of this fear about it but then you know uh growing up listening to these artists and growing up listening to artists who maybe straight or homosexual it doesn't matter but are obviously influenced by them sort Mm -hmm. of alleviates these pains and so on and so forth um 
but uh, but right now we're still at the point where we haven't had a whole lot of major figures in hip hop either who are homosexual, whether that be out of the closet or or not, or people who are willing to sort of stand up for homosexual people. Um, you know, uh, one of the major figures I remember being Kanye, I think like in the early 2000s sort of, uh, you know, tried to put a stop to people, you know, using faggots so uh, fluidly, you know, in their songs or sort of as a as an insult. But I mean, even that he caught backlash off of doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, at the time. Um, and unfortunately, you know, hasn't said a lot on the, uh, uh, on the subject ever since, but still, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that happens, um, every day. And I'm just sort of wondering, you know, how long is it going to take for this thing to just no longer be a thing? And then it's just kind of, you know, whatever. And it's sort of at least a little bit more of an equal playing field. Um, I don't know. Cause I just think hip hop as a genre is really young. Mm-hmm. So that has to, be brought up yeah and also the fact that culturally hip-hop is kind of this institution founded on african-americans and latins and basically people of color and we as people don't really talk about homosexuality as freely as the other people do and when you take those two things and you put them together, you get an equation where now it's like for a gay athlete to come out, that's breaking news, which really shouldn't even matter because at the end of the day, who that person sleeps with does not affect whether or not they can land a layup. Whatever. <laughs> I don't really watch sports. But you get my, the point I'm trying to say. Like, that's what it is. No, no, like. I do. And, and, I, and I feel like, you know, I mean... I mean, there are signs right now where it seems like it's it's getting close to it not being a big deal anymore. But I even but even artists who, like ASAP Rocky, for example, you know, yeah, who's come out and said like, "Hey, you know, if you're homosexual, it's not a big deal to me." But, but I then don't think sort he of did like that. at that at that one award show where, um, you know, he was standing next to who, the basketball player, yeah, the basketball player, and he yeah. made that comment, and he was just like. You know, made a face in the whole thing. That's because these people just say these things because they know. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and that's what I'm saying. Too lie. But it's like, and especially because all these gay things that have been happening, like it seems like all these gay things are happening. Like Frank Ocean, they decide they, they want to cover Frank Ocean's gay letter on his Tumblr. Then Leaf wants to perform our David Letterman. Then this athlete wants to come out. It's like, for some reason, the media is really focusing on all these gay events. Yeah, I mean, these things are only, they only seem like they're happening, quote unquote, to us right now. Because yeah, but the they, media is covering them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's like, you know, it's not like gay things are just happening now. I mean, I, know? I've been gay since before. That. I mean, I think so, but I don't know. How, had, so the, I've been the day gay. that you came out, you weren't on Tumblr. They weren't. They didn't cover it in the no. news. No, and that's what, and that's why I really feel some type of way. Because like when I was born, like Pitchfork did not write an article about the birth of like the queer <laughs> gay rap messiah, and I just feel like what, like I've been here, like mm-hmm. been that did that. But it's like whatever. Like I get my love now, so like can't really complain. Well, I mean, I think um. I, un, un, you know, it's it's sort of a, <laughs> there's like a, a good and a bad side to everything. You know, it's yeah. like, obviously there are people who, you know, outrightly oppose homosexuality, whether it be for religious or personal reasons. And there are people who seem to, um, in the artistic community, endorse it. But, you know, some of them, I'm sure it's wholeheartedly. Some of them, it's maybe to just kind of Safe like faith. avoid some yeah. Backlash. drama. Yeah. You know, and and how much of this, I mean, how much of this acceptance do you feel right now is just kind of like lip service, I guess? A lot of it, but I don't really care because I'm not, I've never been one, me personally as a person, I've never been one to look for acceptance. Mm -hmm. I just don't like dealing with um, fuckery. So I'm just like, when I see a lot of fuckery, it's, it annoys me, but there's a lot of fuckery in the music industry in general. Yeah. So like, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm doing it independent, like. No. And but I mean, despite all this fuckery, yeah, and we're not with the fuckery. No, not right now, anyway. Not with this fuckery. Um, <laughs> not, not right now, anyways. Not right now, anyways. There's some fuckery that we're that's cute down with. It's that's cute cool. fuckery, but not not this fuckery. Not that. Not that shit. Um, you know, do, do you feel like uh, any of this has sort of affected your ability to connect with an audience right now? I mean, it's, I mean, even though there are people in the audience that, may, I mean, in the, in the artistic community that may be sort of saving face, yeah. I mean, there are 
there are genuine emotions toward your music in, I mean, as far as music fans are out there, right? Yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's, is I mean, well, what I'm saying is that like, at least that connection you feel is real in some way, right? I mean, there aren't pe- I mean, there may be people who may say something See, like, I don't know, like, cause this, I, my music is so like, music is so like internet and yeah. it's like, I'm making free music. So it's like, you can't, it's, it's, hard I to can't tell. really, it's hard to measure affection in a free download, well, I mean, you know, I, it's I, like, well, like that, I know that's, that's kind of weird because you would sort of assume that in some ways it's the opposite because I, I'd imagine that you being an internet musician with access to social media that like people are bombarding you with their opinions all yeah. the time, you know, whether they be positive, negative or not. Yeah. Um, I'd imagine it's sort of overwhelming. I mean, that's cute. Like, I don't really read much. No. No, like, I used to, like, read a lot about myself, and I just, I can't. When you say read much, you just mean read about yourself. Yeah, like, literally, like, I used to read, like, read articles about myself to see what people had to say. Um, I used to search my name on Twitter to see all the subtweets, like, when people would tweet my name without adding me. (laughs) Um, I used to do that on Tumblr. I used to just do that on SoundCloud because I was really interested in, like, Cause I just feel like or if you people ma- like remixing you on SoundCloud. Or, yeah, it's just uh, like if if you do if you do work, you want to hear people's feedbacks, whether it be negative or positive. It's yeah. just it's just you just have that desire. Like I wonder how this affected people. But then when you really realize, like everyone has Wi-Fi, everyone has an opinion, everyone's point of view is not really worth two shits. Especially when it's like all these people that have negative comments, you're never going to interact with them in your life. Like no one that doesn't like the eulogy is going to come to my show at South by to tell me in person why they didn't like fuck your boyfriend and why the eulogy should have been the intro. Like no one's going to say that. So it's like these people's opinions really don't matter at the end of the day. So it's like you just have to keep doing you and keep pleasing the people that you are pleasing. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel like. Do you feel like there's a point at which every artist who's in your opinion sort of like a more internet based artist sort of goes through that same sort of thing it's like there's kind of this because you're making music for other people like of course you want to see how other people are reacting to it but then if you get some success off of that you kind of have to divide your time between making music that you think is great and putting all of your effort into that and obsessing over every single thing that people may be saying about yeah all these artists all these internet artists like most of the artists in my generation are internet trolls it's just a fact like and it's like you have to but that's just because our generation we grew up in aol chat rooms we grew up on myspace we grew up worrying about what people thought about us and what people said about us like and also we also grew up monitoring what other people were doing Mm -hmm. what like you know so just like we're all trolls i mean it's 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 not only that but it's like i think i think other generations would have made the same mistake or had the same obsessions if they had the ability to just punch their name into a search engine and yeah. see everything that everybody has ever said about them. Yeah, like, that's really, that's really, like, it's fucked up. But it's, like, that's just the, our generation. Like, when Prince was making music, well, Prince still is making music. It wasn't like when Prince's first album came out, Prince could just type Prince somewhere and get all these reviews. Like, no, Prince didn't care. Like, Prince was just making music. And I just feel like my generation's not like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, back then he had like access to, he would have to like read reviews or something, Yeah, you know, which he responded to critics in, in a song of his as well, you know? Well, I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying that like, you know, now it's sort of like you don't even have to necessarily listen to critics. You can just one or two or three or five critics. You but, can listen to 500 yeah, cause the difference of is, people who've heard your tape. The difference now, yeah, everyone's a critic now. Everyone with Wi-Fi is a critic and it's just like, shut up. <laughs> Like, I, I'm not, and that's the thing, like, I don't want everyone to like me, yeah. but the fact that people feel like they have to go out their way to tell you why they don't like you is very annoying. But but obviously, in in some sort of way, you know, you, you feel like you're, like you said earlier, you know, you said you're an entertainer, you want to make music that appeals to at least large enough of a group of people. Yeah, so, so I can pay my student loans. So. Pay your student loans and thrive, so on <laughs> yeah. and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, what opinions do you, how do you decipher between an opinion that's relevant to you? Like, oh, if I go this road based on this idea that I heard from somewhere else, I could be making music that would entertain more people versus, 
you know, this is just bullshit or this is too far outside of what I want to say in my music or do with my music. I think it's more so me hearing something. And if if someone says something to me and it makes me feel a certain way, I it makes know you feel some type of way. Yeah. If someone says something or types something and it makes and I read it and I feel some type of way, I know that that I have to I have to investigate that because a lot of things people say I it doesn't affect me at all. So it's like I don't give a fuck. But if you say something to me like 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 um Cakes Killer uses too much pitching in a track. Like I'm going to be like I don't I don't I don't think I do that. But the fact that I felt some type of way about that, I have to now think about that. And so when that happens, I normally just talk to my friends like, well, you guys, do you guys agree? Or I'll talk to my DJ like, do you think we do this too much? So it's like those little things. But a lot of it is just in- internal battles of. Yeah. But it sounds like you're more attuned to like some technical stuff. That yeah, it's, it's, it's always it's always. But if some guy's stuff, like, he's fucking annoying. You just completely just disregard that. Yeah, like if someone just like, why is this, why is this fag even rapping? Like I'm not, I'm not going to be laying in my bed and be like, why am I even rapping? Like that's not going to affect me. But if, but if someone like a YouTube comment is like, why does this fag always have to rap about sucking dick? Then it's going to be like, ooh, why do I always have to rap about sucking dick? Maybe I should rap about something else. Like, you know, it, it just depends on how the level of fuckery and how you're gonna come at me because there's there's ways you can critique someone and there's ways of being a bitch and sometimes people just it, it kind of sounds like it, it kind of sounds like if you read something like cakes the killer uses too much pitching in a song yeah that 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 you respond to that comment or you respond to that opinion um almost as if like you have that opinion already in you but a very tiny voice and you're just yeah. you know but you've already kind of been like nah I'm just going to go full throttle in this direction yeah and then you know and then if you see that mirrored in something somebody else says that you're like oh maybe that voice was right or maybe I should listen to that yeah or something like that because to me like I've this the eulogy was my second mixtape and it's like I've oversaw everything I've picked the beats wrote the songs laid out the template I art direct all my own covers so it's like everything is very much the only person I have to listen to is me and I also fund everything. Like I pay for all my own studio time. Like I pay for everything. But it's like now that I'm like working with sponsors now it's like not only do I have funding and I have, you know, I get a lot of cute things, but now I also have people that I have to answer to in a way. Like we like this, but why is this like this? Like I have to explain things now. And it's like as as an independent artist I feel like reading those YouTube comments and being able to internalize and and have that really helps because now it's like I have to really answer to like a higher up in a way and it's like it could be a shitty situation but it's like if this is what you want to do you have to learn how to work with people Mm -hmm. unless you're going to be on like your Macklemore rage Mm -hmm. which I'm not (laughs) (laughs) okay so wrapping up but going back to the music, yeah, you have this sad boy EP on the way. Uh uh-uh. uh, a lot of song. No, not 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 soon. I'm saying later okay, on. Okay, yeah, four. It's gonna later be like four tracks where it's a lot of tracks, no, heartbroken, like heartbroken tracks. Like I have like many Ripperton samples on it. Like it's like that's that's pretty. Got a song called Hey Poppy on it. It's very like. It's very like slit cutting music. Like your most depressing release so far. It's literally it may be the most depressing release of the year, mm-hmm. but it's still very cute. Is it going to come out this year? Yeah, I want it to come out this okay, year. Okay, it's going to come out this year. Yeah, I really want it to come out this like year. Like in the fall. Yeah, because it's I, I haven't dropped a mixtape in like damn near. It seemed like thirty years. It seems like thirty years. It seems like thirty in years. In in internet time, it's been a it's been a very long time, and I'm really happy that people are actually still interested in me because yeah. that means a lot. But yeah, I'm definitely working on releasing Hunger Pains in May, and I hope people like it. It's the follow up to the well, eulogy. Well, the Hunger Pains is going to come out in May. That's the more aggressive. I mean, you're telling me it's like a fighting game, and sonically, Pro- sonically, it's it's. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I This is what my DJ said. My DJ said, like, lyrically, it's a lot more aggressive and the production is a lot more aggressive. Mm-hmm. To me, I just hear my fucking self sc- screaming in the booth. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just tell you what the DJ says. So the DJ says it's The DJ said it's definitely more aggro, which is like, okay. I'm working on being less aggro, guys, too. Because I, I have a rep of being the one that's always yelling in the booth. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be like that all the time. 
Well, it's good because sometimes diversity. I could chill. Yeah, some see, like I could have like sexy, like you know, like or sometimes I'm just carrying, like. But it just depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got it. So that comes out in May, and you all better download it. Anthony is gonna do a review. He's probably gonna hate it, but you know, he still gets a shout out in the credits. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Again, that was Cakes the Killer hanging with me in El Casa del Needle Drop. El Casa de where the fuck am I? But I'm having fun. Yay! All right. Uh, Cakes the Killer, the Needle Drop, <laughs> Anthony Fantano, forever. 